We bless your name, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. All glory, honor unto you. And we pray that you open the heavens and bring down the angels of God. Yes, to guide this teaching, to give illumination in the name of Jesus. Saints of God, I have a very interesting topic today. Building history with God. Building history with God. And our guiding scripture is Matthew 7, verse 7. And I read, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, no finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. I repeat, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Saints of God, Building history with God is very much tied to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, that says, Knock, and the doors will be open. And the scriptures say that heaven and earth may pass away, but the, uh, no iota of the word of God will pass away, which means we stand firmly on the integrity of the word of God, that as he has asked us to knock, and that when we knock, that he said the doors will be open. And he also assures us in the book of Psalm uh, chapter 50, verse 3, that when we call upon him, when we pray, that he will come, he will listen, and he will not be silent. So building history with God is all tied in divine dynamics with God. It's all connected to having to knock on the doors of heaven so that he that have promised us in the book of Psalm, uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 will open the doors when we knock history actually is an enduring witness that he is Jehovah El Gibor Jehovah El Gibor that's the almighty god the god of the heavens and the earth the Elohim the El Shaddai the God of many dimensions. So building history with him is the most important thing in the life of the believer. So that we will, it's like a buffer. It's like having divine immunity against issues of life. So that you can easily call upon that, the, the, the God of the heavens, the El Gibor, that has built a wall around you and is ready to protect and shield you, even through life's problems. Incidentally, so a lot of people come to the Lord when they have problems, when they are sick, anxious, they don't know what tomorrow is. Yes, uh, it's interesting to let the people of God know that the people of God are not insulated from problems. The people of God are not insulated from difficulties. I don't care who is preaching to you, but some of these problems, stressors, pain that we have, sickness, the, you know, discomfort that we have to go through, la sometimes lack, these are things that make us, that knock us to our knees. Hena in the Holy Scriptures had a problem. She wanted a child. And that burden knocked her to her knees, and she had to knock on the doors of heaven. And the Lord was faithful. The Lord opened those doors. When you have a history with the Lord, you can tap into that history and remind the Lord when things are going the way you do not want. And remind him about the great and mighty things you have done with him, about the many decades of unbroken fellowship you have with him, or even the many months or whatever of unbroken fellowships and the things you have done in, in his kingdom. When you have this history, this history that's a relationship with the lord then you can actually you know who you are connected with you know he is the elohim the god that has answers to all problems you are now free even in the midnight hours when things you are going through certain discomforts it could be health problems it could be emergencies medical emergencies whatever you can feel free to call in, in release a cry in the midnight hours and the Lord will, and then the Lord will come down. He will open the heavens and come down, because He says that in the book of uh, Psalm 68 that He will come down 
for the people that are waiting on him. And as the Lord makes a descent unto you in the midnight hours to, to heal uh, and to take care of those problems, saints of God, that, uh, that may, uh, you know, keep you away from the ambulance. That may keep you away from the emergency rooms in the hospitals. You may wonder, then, why is it that people of God have to go through some of these discomforts? The Lord himself knows it when you are going through those discomforts. And that's why he said in the book of Isaiah 66, verse 9, I will not cause pain without bringing forth new things. Because sometimes the very pains we go through become the foundations of our ministries, the foundations of the messages that we preach. Those painful things that we go through, sometimes the, the Lord is using it as fire to prune us, to remove the things that clog our realm, that will hinder us from being useful to him, even from being better persons in our homes, in our families, at the workplace. Yes, he said, I, Isaiah 66 verse 9, I will not cause pain without birthing new things. Jesus went through pain at Gethsemane on Golgotha Hills. And the Lord bettered new things, salvation, healing, and gave us the permission to preach the gospel to the nations of the world so that they would prepare for his second coming. So and through when we go through some of these excruciating moments, I want to tell you that they may become foundations of ministries. And in those moments, you may receive dreams and visions and, uh, 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 and become actually a better vessel to be used in the hands of the Lord. So prayers, knocking on the doors of heaven, is a way, a clear, a sure way of, uh, of uh, building history with the Lord. And you know, when you, knock, when you want to knock on the doors of the Lord, because he's holy, you have to go with worship, with thanksgiving, with praise, glorifying his name, and you, you know, so that he, his hands will be moved to mercy on your behalf and not judgment, no matter the sins you have committed. So worship opens the divine atmosphere to welcome our Lord into your, in, in, into your terrain. Then you can now begin to knock. Yes. So the barrage of problems, the tribulations, the trials, the buffeting winds, the cold rains, the valley experiences, uh, you know, valley experiences, you may, like you, 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 like you are bankrupt, you are actually in a, va in a valley. But the God of the valley is also the God of the mountains, and he can bring you out of that valley. So this barrage of problems, tribulations, and trials, uh, we, uh, it is best because we cannot carry this burden so that to save ourselves, high blood pressure, and the like of it. We uh, consciously we send this, these problems, these issues of life to the cross. For that reason, the Lord died on Golgotha Hills. So... Uh, when you also praying unto the Lord, the Lord honors declarations of faith. If you're a Christian, of course, faith, you are guided by faith. Yes. And uh, when you make prophetic declarations, as you continue with the Lord, uh, apparently you'll be getting higher and higher in the spirit. And you will be led, you know, to be able to make these declarations, standing on the integrity of the word of God, Reminding the Lord about the things he has said and reminding the Lord of your faithfulness unto him. Incidentally, prayer has no geographical barriers. You know, prayer travels to different continents of the world, tearing down uh, 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 mountains. And that's why the Lord confidently told Zerubbabel that no mountain will be able to stand before you. And that is why the Lord told Gideon, tear down the altars in your father's houses. So prayers have no geographical barriers. Nothing hinders prayers. So as you release the prayers, God can go to whatever continents to tear down Buddhist temples and ancient altars. And so in building a relationship with God, building history with the Lord, you will have to have a, a journal as a Christian to journalize your walk with God, to journalize your experiences with God where you, write, you carefully write down the testimonies the, and document God's faithfulness. When he answers those prayers, you get into those details because that is building your log with God. 
so that you can make references to them. You can use them for your ministrations. And uh, in moments of need, you can tap back and you can look back and remember the things that the Lord has done. He is the God that turns hopeless situations around and he reverses situations and rights the wrongs. No matter the mistakes we have made, he goes into the deepest recesses of our hearts to right the wrongs. And because the Lord honors uh, these pr prayer sessions we have with him as we uh, come to him in the day, in the midnight hours, in the wee of the mo morning, because he knows he will not allow us to perish in the wilderness. Even when the children of Israel were thirsty, the Lord was concerned. When they were hungry, he gave them money. When they had no, when it was bitter waters they were confronted with, he had a responsibility to them because they call upon him. It's a relationship with the Lord, and he turned those waters into sweet waters. My prayer is that our lives will be, will be turned to sweetness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord turns, uh, can turn around and ancestry history to align with, the, with, the, with what he wants, the blueprint of your life. So building histories are like platforms to testify that God is dependable, God is reliable, that you can co do, go along confidently on your Christian journey with the Lord. So when you are building history with the Lord, Apostle Paul, for instance, like uh, as it was mentioned in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, Apostle Paul, Yes, he, wa he, he did, uh, he, of course, he offended the Lord and the body of Christ. But at the time of his conversion, he was really one of the most honored apostles of, of, of his time. And to, till today, we make reference to the journey, to the ministrations of, uh, and the letters that Apostle Paul wrote to various ministries and towns and cities and the global population at large. Because the uh, Apostle Paul had built a history unto the, with the Lord, that was why he requested in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, that may the Lord open the doors, global doors, so that his messages can be preached. And you can see, that was a prophetic request unto the Lord. And as he made that request, the Lord sealed it with the blood of the Lamb. The Lord sealed it with the blood that was shed on Golgotha Hill. And today, the messages of, of Apostle Paul are preached all over the place, all over the world. He's the God that turns the midnight hours. Yes, to, 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 as the day, as the night, you may cry in the night, but the Bible says joy comes in the morning because he will, he will have brought down those mountains standing before you and turned them to plains and lifts up the valleys to become level grounds so that there will be sunshine again in your life because the Lord will not allow us to perish in the wilderness. He has to bring that sunshine to give you comfort, to give you succor. And that is why as we continue to build our histories with the Lord, he said, he, 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 he told us in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, that he will restore the for our fortunes before our very eyes. Even when you have been put to shame and disgrace wherever you have been, the Lord also assures us in the book of uh, Zephaniah chapter 3 that where you have been dishonored, you will, you, they, they will bring, you will come back to be celebrated. Who can do that? It's the mighty right hand of God that turns hopeless situations around, that restores the wasted years, even as he told us in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 25. So as we continue to hold on to the horns of the altar, as we continue to build histories with the Lord, what, when the Lord gives us testimonies, we journalize it, we, we put it in the journals of our heart or even on physical journals. And as we continue to hold on to the horns of the altar, agonizing, yes, through prayer, day and night prayer, worshiping the Lord, singing hallelujah uh, unto the King of kings, unto the Lord of lords, him who can do all things. I want to assure you, saints of God, that the pendulum of victory will swing to your favor. And that is the verdict of the cross. It doesn't matter how long it takes the Lord to answer. Saints of God, remember that the prerogative to answer is his. And he has the blueprint. He has the master plan for you. And uh, uh, But as you plug into that faith, making those prophetic declarations, honoring him, and being also transformed in the newness of life, because the Lord cannot abort sin. You repent when you go wrong. And in fact, the, the, our triumphs, they, are, they come after trials. And because at the point of triumph, 
it's, vic it's supernatural victories that are being recorded. And that's why you must keep your journal to be able to, uh, to, be able to pinpoint some of the uh, supernatural victories that you experience even in your Christian journey. Christ's triumphant entry to Jerusalem as we commemorate at this period shows that victory, that victory is the believer's inheritance. Yes, because Christ, Christ's triumphant entry to Jerusalem, that was a victorious action in the realms of the spirit. And the Lord subdued principalities and powers and got everyone in the world to, un to know that, yes, that he is actually sent by God for uh, such a time as he, as he lived on earth as a human being. So I'm here to, to, to declare unequivocally that victory is the believer's inheritance. Victory, God has promised us that victory as we continue to plug in, building a history with him and not letting him go because he will not let you go. So we document these breakthroughs. Yes, we document the testimonies. Yes, because they are testaments of our walk with God. And I pray that may the grace of the Lord sustain us in this journey, that we will be soldiers of, 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 of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we'll continue to proclaim and propagate the gospel around the nations of the world, because times li like this require the urgency of the gospel, the kings and princes, global populations, the church, yes, non-Christians, they have to hear the gospel. And then the Christians should also arise to declare the, the counsel of God, to declare the gospel to the four corners of the world using different mediums. Luckily, now the world is being ruled by technology. And this technology can penetrate the nooks and crannies of the world. So even where you cannot go, yes, your messages are being transmitted to the Tundra region, yes, to the Arctic Sea, wherever. Yes, your, your message is going all over the world. And this is the reason the Lord has given us power to evangelize and even to be able to trample on scorpions, on cobras, and, and, and crush snakes. Yeah, because when you take the mantle of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you plug into the Great Commission, you will actually be able to plug into the, the energy of God, the energy of heaven. And I want to encourage you, please journalize your testimonies, build history with the Lord and the God of the heavens and the earth will honor his word. He will come to listen to us. He will set us free from captivity. He will breathe new life upon us. He will give us, even at this time, we commemorate the, 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 the death and burial of our Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection. He will resurrect the anointing upon our lives. He will resurrect good things and new things. That even when we have gone through issues in the process of building a, 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 a history with him, we, the Lord is also helping us to birth our ministries. And these are things you, you, you should also journalize. And I want to thank the Lord for being with us for these great moments of sharing on this beautiful topic of building history with the Lord. Praise the Lord.